Today, I want to talk about how FINRA is finally cracking down on illegal short selling and market manipulation. I also want to talk about how Adam Aaron will soon finally address the synthetic shorting of AMC and the bad actors attacking our company. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Diane Garrett tweeting it's encouraging to see FINRA finally say they plan to crack down on market manipulation. She said predatory short sellers are creating an unfair situation and it's high time that regulators start doing more to protect retail investors. I hope they follow through on this. Now, if you didn't know, Diane Garrett is actually the CEO of Highcroft Mining, who AMC has a very strong partnership with. It's also encouraging to see Diane Garrett also joining the numerous CEOs that are currently fighting back against predatory short selling, encouraging FINRA to do more. Over the last few weeks, we've seen more and more and more CEOs jumping on CEOblock.com and fighting back against those short sellers. I think considering the CEO of Highcroft Mining has now joined the petition, I don't think it will be long until Adam Aaron and even Ryan Cohen join along as well. This article says that FINRA has expanded its enforcement priorities for 2023. It says the industry's self-regulatory organization said in the report that it paid close attention to firms' fixed income product pricing mistakes, neglectful supervision and reporting of fractional share and short sales, as well as policies and practices that could allow manipulative trading to unfold. So they're effectively going to focus on neglectful short selling, not only neglectful short selling, but also the reporting of that short selling to make sure these firms aren't using or aren't doing false locates. FINRA said that it had found inadequate written supervisory procedures, non-specific surveillance thresholds and surveillance deficiencies, allowing for manipulative trading to take place, specifically citing firms for not identifying specific steps and individuals responsible for monitoring for manipulative conduct. So not only have these firms been identifying manipulative trading, they also haven't been identifying those responsible. And that's what FINRA plans to crack down on. Now you may say, Tom, is this just entirely lip service from FINRA and they're actually going to do nothing? Well, I think if FINRA had their way, it probably would be entirely lip service and they probably wouldn't do anything. But considering more and more CEOs are coming together on CEOblock.com to fight against predatory short selling, including Diane Garrett from Highcroft Mining and soon Adam Aaron and Ryan Cohen from AMC and GameStop, I think FINRA will have no choice but to actually implement these new procedures. I think FINRA might actually be forced into it by all of these CEOs from all of these massive American companies. As Diane said, predatory short sellers are creating an unfair situation, and it's high time that regulators start doing more to protect retail investors. So it's now finally not just us, the retail investors, fighting back against the SEC and against FINRA, even these CEOs of major American companies are also getting involved as well. And as Jen tweeted, she said it's just a hunch, but I truly believe that AMC's Adam Aaron is going to speak out soon about predatory short selling now that HYMC's Diane Garrett has addressed the issue, as well as many other CEOs, including Roger Hamilton. This is great for retail investors. As more and more CEOs are speaking about predatory short selling, especially now that Highcroft Mining CEO is getting involved, I think Adam Aaron basically has to speak on it. Now, Bleeding replied saying something is brewing for sure, but we know that Adam Aaron is extremely meticulous with his tweets. He said, I do believe something big is coming, and if we don't hear it from him, then the truth always finds a way to come to light. We know that Adam Aaron and Ryan Cohen especially have to be extremely meticulous with what they tweet because of how many eyes are on AMC and GameStop. It's not just retail eyes on AMC and GameStop, but I'm sure the regulators and these massive hedge funds are watching Adam Aaron's every single move, and Ryan Cohen's as well. I think these hedge funds are basically begging for Adam Aaron and Ryan Cohen to slip up so they can basically swoop in, have these CEOs exiled, and hope that AMC as a company ends up failing and going bankrupt. That's why Adam Aaron and Ryan Cohen are being extremely careful with exactly what they tweet and exactly what kind of short selling they try to accuse. For example, I'm sure if Adam Aaron or Ryan Cohen tried to accuse Ken Griffin himself for illegally and synthetically shorting their stocks, Ken Griffin would be the first person on the phone to the SEC, the regulators and to the courts trying to sue both Adam Aaron and Ryan Cohen. But I think it's now getting to the point where we're seeing more and more and more CEOs speaking about predatory short selling. And these predatory short sellers can't sue every single CEO in the entire of the US. And therefore, I think it's now getting to the point where the truth will come out. 
when I think it's just one or two CEOs speaking about predatory short selling and making specific accusations. These CEOs can be silenced, but when every single CEO in the entire country is speaking on predatory short selling, they can't be silenced any longer. And I think this is also coming with excellent timing. As Travis tweeted, he said Goldman Sachs was charged in 2016 by the SEC for improperly providing locates for short sales to its customers like hedge funds. Per the SEC, Goldman inaccurately recorded the firm's locate log. So in plain English, they didn't have the shares for hedge funds to short, and they tried to falsify the information in the locate log. It says the SEC finds that Goldman Sachs violated Regulation SHO by improperly providing locates to customers where it had not performed an adequate review of the securities to be located. Such locates were inaccurately recorded in the firm's locate log that must reflect the basis upon which Goldman Sachs has given out the locates. And it says the requirement that firms locate securities before affecting short sales is an important safeguard against the legal short selling. And interestingly, I think this lawsuit alone provides the evidence that many of these market makers have been using the FTX synthetics as false locates. It's clear that market makers do indeed use false locates and do improperly fill out their locate log with any kind of securities or basically anything they can do to write down on the log and still give out those short sales. If Goldman Sachs have been filling in their locate log with any old rubbish, I wouldn't put it past other market makers to be doing the exact same thing, especially with AMC stock. So I think if FINRA do indeed start cracking down on this short sale reporting and remove the ability for these hedge funds to provide false locates, I think these hedge funds will be massively in trouble. If they can no longer provide false locates with FINRA's blessing, that means they have to provide real locates and can no longer create synthetic shares. And that'll effectively be one less way that hedge funds and market makers can kick the can. And this is all happening at a very interesting time in the overall market. As Inflation Tracker tweeted, he said, Someone from Goldman Sachs just sent me this message. The entire institutional sales floor was laid off yesterday. The music is about to stop. Be ready. This message said, I work in institutional sales at Goldman Sachs. The entire floor was laid off today. The partner held a meeting saying that the music was about to stop. And they may say, Tom, surely that's just absolute rubbish and has no grounds whatsoever. It's a massively trust me bro message. But interestingly enough, Goldman Sachs themselves followed up by sending him a cease and desist letter for his tweet today. He said, I will not cease and I will not desist. So surely if Goldman Sachs themselves have sent a Twitter user with only 26.1 thousand followers a cease and desist letter, there must be some truth to that message. Fingers crossed and touch wood, I've never been sent a cease and desist letter during this entire AMC debacle. Therefore, for somebody with almost half as many followers as I have to be sent a cease and desist, it must be something very, very important, likely founded on truth. Inflation Tracker is also tweeting saying that reports from all over the world are coming in that Bank of America customers are missing money from their accounts. And he said, pull your money out of the banks as soon as possible. He said they're all going to go under big bank runs incoming. So it seems that it's not just Goldman Sachs, but it's also Bank of America that are struggling as well, as many Bank of America customers are missing money from their accounts. Many customers are reporting that their entire accounts have been wiped. Many customers may have had one account, two accounts, or even multiple accounts, but all of their accounts are showing a zero balance or significantly less than they actually had. As you can see from this video, it's not just one or two individual customers, and it's not just me saying it from somebody on Twitter. There's actual people in actual banks, and there's massive, massive queues of them. And it seems the exact same thing is even being reported on Fox News. David Neo tweeted saying, is this how everything is going to start? He said Bank of America is missing money and the issues are getting deeper. He said missing money to pay checks now and customers were told to come back in February. He said they must be joking. The average person could be living paycheck to paycheck. How can people survive another month with no money in their accounts? And Biggums has potentially answered the question by saying, is this why people are missing money? Is Bank of America having liquidity problems? Is there rehypothecation and fractional reserve banking a hell of a drug? And is it all falling down? Bloomberg tweeted saying that Bank of America have started telling executives to pause hiring, except for the most vital positions. Bank of America are clearly trying to cut back on costs, maybe because Bank of America is experiencing a liquidity problem. And as I said, this all comes at a very interesting time in the market, not just because major banks are starting to struggle, but the S&P 500 is in a very, very bad place. 
Sven Tweet is saying this is the most obvious line on the planet right now in the S&P 500. As you can see, the S&P 500 has attempted to break out of this downwards bearish channel over the last year seven separate times, and every single time it has tried and failed. And again, it tried and failed yesterday on Wednesday and the day before on Tuesday and failed again both times. And it seems the S&P 500 is now reversing potentially to new lows. It looks like this is going to be the third leg down for the market crash, taking us to new lows below 3,500 points. And as I said, when we do fall down below 3,500 points, we're going to be seeing tons more hedge funds being liquidated. And importantly, when we start seeing those liquidations, that means hedge funds will be forced to sell off their long positions and close out of their shorts, causing the AMC squeeze. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.